November 2018. Lake Superior throws a 29-foot wave sky high, taller than a three-story house from the middle of North America. No coast, no salt, just the freshwater giant the Ojibwe call Kichegumi, the Great Sea. More than 350 wrecks and about 10,000 lives lie perfectly preserved in its near-freezing depths, an icy archive guarded by three quadrillion gallons, enough to flood both Americas under a foot of water. Superior bends weather, hacks geology, and rewrites every rule for what a lake should be. Today on Beyond Atlas Explore, we're diving into this freshwater ocean's strangest secrets. Hit subscribe for the next wild expedition. Trace your finger to the very top of North America's Great Lakes chain, and you'll hit the border-hugging water mass that separates Ontario from Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Michigan's Upper Peninsula. Up close, Superior feels less like a lake and more like someone carved out an inland ocean, then forgot to add salt. Spread a map of Europe across the table, Austria fits inside Superior with room left for the family car. At 82,000 square kilometers, 31,700 square miles, it's the planet's largest single body of fresh surface water. Unless you count the Caspian Sea, which geographers argue over like it's a team sport rivalry. Empty the basin and you could blanket both North and South America in 12 inches of water. Then wait, because natural runoff would need more than two centuries to refill it. That sheer mass keeps the liquid hovering near 4 degrees C, 39 degrees Fahrenheit, year round, a built-in deep freeze that doubles as a shipwreck time capsule. Slide back 1.1 billion years and North America is trying to tear itself in two. A 2,000 kilometer crack, the mid-continent rift, pulses with lava stacking miles thick slabs of basalt. Had the ripping continued, a brand new ocean would sit where Chicago traffic jams are today. Then, almost on a cosmic whim, the rift stalls. The plates lock but the wound stays open, a colossal trench waiting to be repurposed. Jump ahead to the last ice age. Picture glaciers a mile high bulldozing south. They probe the dormant rift, gouging it deeper, polishing the volcanic walls like glass. Around 10,000 years ago, the planet warms, the ice melts, and that yawning gash fills with fresh meltwater. Version 1.0 of Lake Superior. The scale is so huge that even today, Superior's water levels still pulse with the slow rebound of Earth's crust decompressing from that glacial weight. Pictured rocks Michigan, rainbow stripes of ancient seabed sandstone, curved by wave spray into arches and cathedrals. North Shore Minnesota and Ontario jet black basalt cliffs, solidified lava from the rift's hottest outbursts. Copper-rich Keweenaw Peninsula, volcanic veins that later funded America's first mining boom. Superior averages 147 meters, 482 feet deep, but its darkest pit plunges to 406 meters, deeper than the Eiffel Tower is tall. If you dropped a 40-story office block at that spot, the roof would still sit 100 meters below the waves. Pressure down there hits 600 PSI. Your ears would implode long before you saw daylight again. Surface temperatures flirt with midsummer warmth, yet slip two meters down and the mercury nosedives to four degrees Celsius, 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Jump in on a balmy August afternoon and hypothermia can tag you in under 10 minutes. That liquid chill does more than numb toes. It locks organic matter in stasis, slows bacteria to a crawl, and turns every wreck into a museum exhibit sealed in water instead of glass. From wooden schooners to steel ore carriers, Superior's graveyard spans three centuries of maritime ambition. The headline act is the SS Edmund Fitzgerald, lost in a 1975 gale, split in two, hull still intact, deck gear eerily undisturbed. Sonar scans show railings, dinner plates, even a lifeboat davit frozen mid-swing. The lake floor isn't flat, it's a submerged mountain range. Basalt ridges rise like shark fins, Trenches drop away like elevator shafts. When storm winds push water into one end of the basin, the whole mass sloshes back, creating seiches, inland standing waves that can drain a harbor, 
and refill it minutes later. Mariners call it the bathtub effect. Superior just calls it Tuesday. Walk every inch from Duluth to Sault Ste. Marie and you've clocked more distance than the drive from Maine to Florida. What you won't see much of is white sand. Instead, fist-sized agates, volcanic black grains and cliffs sculpted into Gothic arches by 10,000 winters worth of ice. Apostle Islands, Wisconsin, sea caves that morph into crystal cathedrals each February. Sleeping Giant, Ontario, a mesa that, from the right angle, looks like a titan napping on his back. Black Sand Beaches, Hawaii Vibes Midwest Zip Code, pulverized basalt glittering under northern sun. Isle Royale, 72 kilometers long, sits closer to Canada yet flies the stars and stripes. A wilderness lab where moose and wolves play out a decades-long predator-prey study. The Keweenaw Peninsula, meanwhile, juts 100 kami into the lake, its bedrock laced with native copper that kicked off America's first mining boom. In January, Arctic dry air barrels across Superior's comparatively warm skin and detonates lake-effect snow so intense it looks photoshopped on radar. White pixels stack into five-meter drifts on the Keweenaw, while a village 15 kilometers away clears blue sky off the forecast. Plow crews sometimes chase roaming walls of powder that swallow road signs, then melt into sunlight as if someone flipped a cosmic switch. Meteorologists label it mesoscale banding. Locals just shrug, top off the gas can and stash another loaf of bread in the garage freezer. Fast forward to July, sweat heavy air slides over four degrees Celsius water and the lake begins breathing exhaling fog banks that roll ashore like sheets of living glass, shearing 15 degrees Celsius off the air in under five minutes. A beach barbecue can morph into a hoodie scramble before the burgers flip. Then, in late December, the script flips yet again. Water now warmer than minus 25 degrees Celsius air steams like a planet-sized hot tub, whipping up coils of sea smoke that glow peach at sunrise and crystallize on eyelashes before you finish a sentence. Ore freighters push through the vapor like ghost ships, their horns sounding more submarine than surface. That relentless climate ping pong lets alpine moss share turf with sugar maples, usually found in Tennessee. Stand on the south shore and you're in a botanical liminal zone. Calida's black spruce at your boots, Midwest hardwoods brushing your shoulder, Arctic lichens clinging to the same billion-year-old basalt boulder. Birders log boreal chickadees and indigo buntings on the same hike. Ecologists scribble question marks next to their transect counts. Even the fish mix is weird. Cold-loving lake trout cruise above pockets of warm-water smallmouth bass as if someone jammed two ecosystems into one address. Every ripple you hear belongs to Earth's most critical piggy bank, 10% of all the planet's unfrozen surface fresh water. With nutrient levels so low, you can read your dive computer 30 meters down. Superior is both time capsule and benchmark for pristine. But clarity breeds vulnerability. A single ballast water invader or tailing spill could sprint 350 kilometers before breakfast. Climate change adds plot twists, stronger storms, shorter ice seasons, microplastic drifters hitching rides on shifting currents. As drought gnaws at the American West and global demand spikes, this three quadrillion gallon vault morphs from scenic wallpaper to strategic lifeline, ecological, economic, existential. Lake Superior is a freshwater ocean sewn into the continent by a billion year scar, patrolled by storm forged waves and chilled by glacial ghosts. It rewrites the rulebook for lakes, coasts, even weather itself proof that Earth's wildest frontiers can hide in plain sight, just off Highway 61 and one right turn past Ordinary. Thanks for exploring with Beyond Atlas Explore. Smash that subscribe button, share the video, and drop a comment on where our next off-the-map trek